Hi, and welcome to Camp Explore. Thank you all for being with us this afternoon. My name is Alex Chivini, and I'm one of the program managers at the Westport Library in Connecticut. Today, we are honored to welcome award-winning author and artist, Jerry Kraft. But before we start the show, a couple of notes, and I promise I'll be fast. First, a little bit about Camp Explore. I'd like to start by thanking Roz and Bud Siegel, whose continuing generosity have made these super cool events possible. Each week this summer, the library will host a special guest who is an expert in their field to share their life experience with all of you guys. Our awesome librarians have also created Keep Exploring resource guides so you can learn more about these incredible people and the, work, the things they talk about and the work that they do. So what you're gonna do is just click that button, not now, but later, click that green button right down there below my big giant head, uh, and that'll take you to a really cool special page that gives you all the information you'd ever want about Jerry Craft. Second, and this one is super important, if you have a question for Jerry, please use the ask a question feature below. So just type in your question there and we will do our best to get to it at some point in today's show. And now let's get on to the main event. Jerry Kraft is a New York Times bestselling author and illustrator. His book, New Kid, is the winner of the 2020 John Newberry Medal for the most outstanding contribution to children's literature. It is the very first graphic novel in the Newberry's nearly 100 year history to receive the award. Jerry is only the fifth African-American author to win that amazing prize. New Kid was also awarded the Coretta Scott King Award for an outstanding work by an African-American writer. Jerry is the second person to have won both of those awards in the same year. In 2019, New Kid became the first graphic novel to win the Kirkus Prize in the Young Readers Literature category. And I think coolest, as I tell him whenever I email him, tag him in a social media post or talk to him after an event like this, Jerry Craft is the best and you're all about to find out why. So with that, please help me welcome Jerry Craft. Well, hey everyone and Alex and Cody, thank you very much. So there's a lot to talk about. We're together what the next three hours or so. Okay, maybe just maybe just an hour. So I am Jerry Kraft and author of the graphic novel New Kid, which I have to say I had a lot of fun doing. So what I'm going to do is I am going to share my screen and I'm going to show you some stuff and talk a little bit. And at the end, I'll draw and answer some questions and we'll have a great time. All right. So can you see this? Can you see this is actual homework that I did in the seventh grade. And this is my Spanish homework. And you know, one of the things that I, well, a couple things. One is I always, always, always love to draw. So when I would get back any paper that had this much blank paper, or a full sheet of blank paper, it would be like Christmas. And I would take out my pen and I would just start drawing. My favorite thing in the whole wide world, which was superheroes. And you know, I didn't have a lot of fancy art supplies, you know, so here I am, there's pencil and there's some ballpoint pen. And you know, that was really all I needed, but I love to do it. And as you can tell, I still love to do it. The other thing is, you know, I used to make my own comic books. So one of the things that is interesting and, you know, a lot of kids will come up to me and they'll say, they'll look at New Kid and they'll say, oh, Mr. Kraft, um, I, um, I can't draw like you, you know, I can't ever do that. And it's like, well, you know, I couldn't draw like this either. You know, I used to draw like you. But, you know, as I see more and more kids, you know, when I was, say, 12, I think I was about 12 when I did this, I see some stuff by 11 and 12 year olds that is absolutely amazing. Um, so, you know, it really is what you want to do with it, how much you want to practice and how good you want to get. And I always wanted to get really, really good. I still want to. So I still practice. So in about seventh grade, I started making my own comics. Um, the other thing that's interesting to a lot of people is I did not like to read. Um, I wasn't a book reader, I should say. I read a lot of comic books, mainly Marvel comics. So here is me drawing the Beast from X-Men, 
and my own guy. And this guy here is Iron Man and Submariner Ghost Rider. And you see here, I was the writer, the artist, the inker, the leather, the editor. All right, so in this story, uh, he comes to an airport. Our hero goes to an airport and she's behind the counter. Here you are, one ticket to Egypt. And here's the loudspeaker, flight 313 to Egypt, heading, you know, boarding soon. And then he's on the plane. And you see, you know, I wrote right over this guy. Now, if I was doing it today, obviously I would have moved this text over so you could have a lot of things I would have done differently. But you know what? If I didn't do it this way originally, I wouldn't learn to have done New Kid, right? Drawing is a learning process, right? And I am still getting better. Um, the stuff I draw today is even better than I did a year ago or two years ago when I did New Kid. So uh, it says it's 70 degrees in Egypt with a lightning storm. And uh, okay, so he comes up to this pyramid, ancient pyramid, and he goes, <gasps> The Great Pyramid, here's lightning crackling in the background. And he's digging, that's him with a shovel. I've hit something, can it be? It is, it's the great, you know, it's this famous sword that he's been looking for. And just as he holds it up over his head, it gets struck by lightning, which releases this ancient cosmic energy, gives him these superpowers, and he uses those superpowers to fight crime. So that was my story back in the day, and I'm sticking with it. Right. But you know what? It really is about using your imagination. And most importantly, it's about finishing. You know, a lot of kids have so many projects that they start and then they don't like them and then they ball it up and throw it away and they never actually finish it. So if you have a sketchbook, draw it, even if it doesn't come out good now, which it might not. You know, I do stuff that doesn't come out good and I do it two times, three times, four times. Okay, now uh, I'm going to skip ahead, you know, 100 years to me doing New Kid. Now, it's kind of funny that with all of the things, all the books that I have done in the past, with all kinds of people going into space and dinosaurs or whatever, that the one that is most popular is my book that is loosely based on me and my two sons. So, if you have read New Kid already, uh, on the right here is a picture of where Jordan Banks lives, and on the left here is a picture of where Jerry Craft grew up. So, this is where I lived when I was a kid, and that was my room right there, and now that is Jordan's room right there. So, I used a lot of stuff from my own life. Um, in New Kid. This is uh, one of the schools I went to on 145th and Condon Avenue, which I don't even know if it's still a school, but first grade through sixth grade in my elementary school. And I just remember the staircase going all the way up. Sixth grade was all the way up at the top of the building with the cafeteria. A very small school. Now, what else is uh, very similar to Jordan Banks is when I was a kid, I was always one of the smallest and the youngest kids in my class. So this is me over here. Um, see, I don't even think I'm five feet tall at this point. And this is me graduating eighth grade. So most of my oh. schools by then was, were really like, you know, um, 25 kids. This is St. Matthew's Lutheran School in Sherman Avenue in the Bronx in New York City. And these are all the tall kids in the back. And of course, here I am up in the front. And I was always one of the youngest and the smallest kids in my grade from kindergarten all the way up till probably about 11th grade. It wasn't until maybe senior year of high school and through college that I got a little bit of a growth spurt and literally grew like six inches. But so this is me. So this is Jordan Banks going to um, a school, very small school like this. And I wanted to be an artist and my parents did not want me to be an artist. So instead of letting me go to the art school of my dreams, 
they send me to a school in Riverdale, just like Jordan Banks, because they did not want me to be an artist just like Jordan Banks. So I go to Fieldston, the Fieldston School in the Riverdale section of New York. And here I am here. And now instead of 25 kids in my class, of which, you know, 22 are African American, now there are only like 10 of us out of a class, ninth grade class of 110. So it was very different. I didn't know the music. I didn't know the clothes. I didn't know the different references, the books, you know, the food. I, it was very, very difficult. So I thought that that would be a really good story uh, to base New Kid on. Now, I always drew uh, comic strips as I got older. Again, I didn't think I would ever write a book because I didn't think I would ever read a book that was like 200 pages. So I created this comic strip called Mama's Boys. And this is Yusuf. Mom says, Yusuf, your pants. I don't believe it. They aren't all bagged up around your ankles. They're the perfect length. Why can't all your pants fit this well? And he goes, because these are shorts, Ma. So I used to draw this by hand. I would scan it into my computer and I would color it in Adobe Photoshop. And then after I had a bunch of those comic strips done, I said, you know what? I am going to publish my own book. So I, you know, I started by trying to get it published. And I sent my book to publishers all around the country. And I got nothing but rejection, 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 rejection. So I didn't think that um, anyone would ever be interested in the kind of books that I wanted to have published and that I wanted to write. So I started publishing my own books. And, you know, that was really kind of how it started. So the first one I published was Mama's Boys as American Sweet Potato Pie. Then a few years later, I did Mama's Boys uh, Homeschooling. And then in 2011, I did Mama's Boys The Big Picture. And then and it was basically just a collection of the Mama's Boys comic strips. And then what happened, um, I, in 20, I would say 2016, right? When I got offered the opportunity to do New Kid, I didn't know if I could do a 250 page graphic novel because when they showed me a copy of like Smile by Raina Telgemeier, I was like, wow, that's a lot of work. You know, it was great to read, but I couldn't imagine sitting down and drawing maybe five panels per page, five or six um, panels per page, something that was 250 pages. That's literally thousands of panels. And the panels are the little boxes. So could I actually do something that had that many panels and that much work? So I wanted to practice. So I turned my Mama's Voice collection of comic strips into a graphic novel. And it's called Mama's Boys in Living Color. And I think it's about, I would say, a 96-page book. Um, because I knew that if I could do a 96-page graphic novel, eventually I could do a 250-page graphic novel. It might just take me three times as long, but at least I knew I could do it. And then, um, since I couldn't get published, um, there were a lot of other people who couldn't get published either. And um, we're speaking primarily African-American authors that, who just wanted to do books about kids being regular kids. And that was all I ever wanted to do. And they started coming to me and saying, hey, Mr. Kraft, can you help me to publish my book? So they'd send me the story. I would read it. And if I liked it, I would illustrate it. And um, edit it, I design it, color it, and um, I would publish it. So over about a 20 year span, I helped to publish, I would say three dozen books, about 36 different books. 
Um, this is one that I wrote also in about 2014, 2015 called The Offenders, Saving the World While Serving Detention. And I wrote it with my two sons, Jalen and Aaron Kraft. And it is five middle grade kids who are kind of the bullies of their school. They get zapped, they get superpowers, but instead of looking cool like Spider-Man or Deadpool or Black Panther or Wonder Woman, they end up looking like the kids that they pick on. So she gets spaghetti thin like a string bean. He picks on the bigger kids, so he gains like 50 pounds. He picks on the smart kids, he becomes a genius, but kind of uncoordinated and clumsy. Uh, he picks on kids with braces, so he gets these two big metallic buck teeth. And she's always calling kids mousy. Oh, you're so mousy. And she literally shrinks down to the size of a mouse. Now they have to try to save the school, but now they get teased so they know what it's like. All right. Then one of my first big breaks is in 2014, I got an email saying, hey, Mr. Kraft, would you like to illustrate a book for us? And it was from Scholastic. So in 2014, I illustrated The Zero Degree Zombie Zone, written by Patrick Henry Bass, illustrations by Jerry Kraft, and it was for Scholastic, which was a huge break. So that was when the first book that I had that had, you know, worldwide distribution, all different kinds of libraries and schools and things like that. So I was really, really happy and proud of that. Okay, so when it came time to join New Kid, um, you know, I always like to sketch it out first, even though it may change, but it helps my editor and my agent to be able to read it first. And it helps me with the pacing. So here um, is originally the first day of school in New Kid, and here's Miss Roll, and here's Jordan. And they go one by one. Hi, my name is Liam. I've been here since kindergarten. I have a younger brother and older sister, and I'm Jordan's guide. Great, Jordan. And then Jordan talks. And then here's Alexandra with a sock puppet on her hand. And everyone's kind of like, wow, that's weird. But, you know, I kind of liked it. But, you know, I really wanted to do the whole sock puppet thing bigger and show the classroom bigger. And then uh, I wanted to do like the Harkness method where there's more of the kids kind of just wrapped around the teacher's desk instead of just rows and rows. So although this wasn't bad, I turned it into this. So now here you have Miss Roll here. She's got her back to you. And here is Drew and Alexandra and Jordan and Liam and boy Alex and Colin and Andy and Graham and girl Alex. And now she says, Hello, I'm Mr. Honey Bunny, and this is my best friend, Alexandra. We live on the Upper West Side and love to make puppets. So you see the difference in the interest of that. You know, I could have had an entire book with just five or six panels on each page, but I think it would get visually kind of boring. So I go from that to that. And I think that this really kind of pops out. You have a busting out of the frame, the round frame, almost like a spotlight. And here's Mr. Honey Bunny. And I just like that much, much better. Same thing on this page. Uh, this is when Drew comes in. He says, hi. Uh, well, that solves it. Please find a seat. He says, well, um, I live by Yankee Stadium with my grandmother and my favorite subject is math. And here's Drew and he looks over. And Jordan waves, and he's like, hey, what's up? Jackpot, I know, right? And what I didn't like about this was I didn't want Drew and Jordan to become best friends right away because I wanted it to be more realistic where it takes time to build a friendship. You know, it's just like, um, you know, anyone going to school, sometimes it takes a while, you're nervous, that kind of thing. So I changed it. She says, great, that solves it. Find a seat, Drew. Tell us a few things about yourself. So this is pretty much the same. I changed it visually. I have Jordan with his hand on his chin now. So he's like, hmm. And then he's looking, staring, staring, staring. Here's Ashley on her phone. 
And now Drew senses something and he looks up real quick. And instead of Jordan waving, he turns his head because he's shy and doesn't want to be seen staring at him. And then it's almost like a spotlight with a question mark. And I like these four panels because there are no words at all. And I do that um, occasionally because, again, since I wasn't a reader, I know that there are kids who are like me that don't like to read a lot of words. So if I can go through a panel or a page or two pages without putting any or many words in, I like to do that. So again, here's the spotlight. And then when he goes back to reading, then Jordan kind of turns around. So that's been really, really pretty cool. Um, so I signed my contract January 2017th. And I think I drew every single day till like after midnight from January 2017. And I turned it in to HarperCollins, my publisher, February 2018. So it took 13 months of drawing, like 15 or 16 hours a day. Um, and then a couple of cool things. I got what's called a cover blurb from my son's favorite author when they were growing up. Funny, sharp, and totally real. Jordan Banks is the kid everyone will be talking about. Jeff Kinney, author of Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And on January 27th of this year, I got the call not only saying that I was the winner of the Coretta Scott King Author Award, but also the first graphic novel to ever win the John Newberry Medal for the most distinguished contribution to American literature for children, which was quite the honor. The first graphic novel to win it in its almost 100 year history, it's been around 98 years, fifth African American author to do so, and the first book since But Not Buddy to win both of these major awards in the same year, which is pretty amazing. Um, now some really cool things are happening. It is being translated into five different languages. Now I have no control over the languages, but I believe this is Albanian. So I think the five are Albanian, Romanian, Iranian, um, Korean and Greek. And that's because people in those countries, publishers saw it, they liked it, and then they contact my publisher to get the rights to translate it into that language. So, so far, no Spanish or French, but it is in Albanian or Korean, if you want. And recently, I would say very recently, this Friday, I handed in the final version of the sequel to New Kid. When school gets real, you can still show the world you're a class act. Sequel to the Newberry Medal when a new kid, Jerry Craft, New York Times best-selling author. And here is Drew, who grew out his hair. This is the same uh, group that you like. All the same characters are back. Um, Drew grew out his hair a little bit, and this is him juggling schoolwork and friendship with Liam and homework and Jordan and things like playing basketball. And that is coming out. You know, it's so funny. I just finished it. Um, let me see, like this Friday. And it is already out online for pre-order. Um, so if you have an indie bookshop near you or you can go online or... Um, Let's see, I think bookshop.org is a great place that will hook you up with um, a local indie bookseller. Um, and that is it. That is really what I've been doing. It will be out October 6th of this year, Class Act. Whew. So there we have it. Oh, we're so excited for Class Act, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, you know, I did it in almost half the time um, because so to my friend, Mr. Brian Ripley Crandall. So it took me about 13 months to draw New Kid. And because it was so popular, Harper Collins, my publisher, now it'd be Harper Allen Quiltry. Um, they were like, if there's any way 
to speed up production because these readers, your readers, like Mr. Brian Ripley Crandall, are clamoring at the bit, which is a term that no one even uses anymore, but they are very hungry uh, to get their hands on a sequel. So yes, as of Friday, I was drawing every single day. There were times when I literally would put my pen down and uh, I would go upstairs, you know, to go to bed and the sun was coming up that I had literally worked until five or six o'clock in the morning. Um, I draw the entire thing digitally. This is a Wacom Intuos Pro, and it's my stylus. And as I'm drawing on this, I can actually see the screen, uh, the cursor on the screen moving. And I will give you a demonstration of how I draw. Uh, now, this does not mean don't draw on paper. You know, you don't have to get a lot of fancy art supplies. You know, just get the basic down. There's a lot of great books. There's stuff on YouTube. There's all kinds of things, you know, at your local library on how to draw um, that I I just really take advantage of. And I think that I am both a much better artist and a much better writer than I was when I created New Kid. And I know that's kind of weird because it's like, wait a minute, you've uh, you won the Newberry and you won this and you won this and you think you're better now. But yeah, I really do feel like uh, when you draw that much, you have no choice but to to get better. And that is just something that I've always aspired to do. And hopefully when book three comes out, yes, there will be a new kid three. I don't have a name for it yet. Um, thank you, Bonnie. She said she loved new kid. Um, you know, I think that I will, it will be the best of the three. And um, yeah, there you have it. That's great. So we we, <clears throat> we do have a bunch of questions. Okay. Uh, and and uh, all of our Camp Explorer uh, campers, you guys are in for a real treat because Mr. Kraft is going to actually draw in front of us in a little while, which is going to yep. be super cool. Uh, I'm going to start with Hannah's question. Um, Hannah asks, did you ever get stuck while writing? So here is the best advice that I can give. Um, when, okay, so when I was doing Mama's Boys, the comic strip, one day a friend of mine said, hey, you know what, Jerry? Um, I really like Mama's Boys, but it's not as funny as you are in real life. And I was like, huh, that's kind of interesting. Um, hmm. and I was kind of think of why, and I think what happens is if you sit down in front of a blank piece of paper, a blank notebook, a blank canvas, a blank anything with no idea of what you're going to do, there's a lot of pressure on you, you know? So what I started doing is I started just going around, you know, living life, paying attention. There's a saying that you have two ears and one mouth. That way you listen twice as much as you talk. So like, even if I do a school visit, right? Um, I will look and I'll hear kids talking about maybe going on Instagram or their favorite food or something like that, right? Or even now like this, you know, like I could be talking, like if I was doing a joke about talking on, you know, Crowdcast, like we're doing now, that I'd be getting everyone's name wrong because it looks like everyone is on their mom's account, you know? So I go, oh, hi, Nikki. And like, I'm not Nikki. That's my mom. Oh, hi, Bonnie. I'm not Bonnie. That's my mom. You know what I mean? And then um, you just get everything wrong. So I can make something funny out of that. So when I go around throughout the day, it's almost like a bee picking up pollen. You know, whatever he goes, uh, you pick up some pollen and then I come back and now I have all these ideas. I'm like, okay, you know what? Hmm. I'm going to draw about, uh, you know, getting Bonnie's name wrong on Crowdcast or, you know, Brian Crandall. 
I think that he's a 12 year old kid. I'm going, okay, okay, little Brian, that's very nice. And it ends up that he's 62 years old. Just kidding, Brian. But you see, that's where the humor comes from. Um, and that is really the, the biggest thing. Um, so I really don't get um, writer's block anymore once I started doing that. And now even though I literally just handed in class act on Friday, I'm already starting to think about what I want to put into New Kid 3. I don't even have a name for it yet, you know, but I have some ideas of what I want to put in to make it different, make it better so that I'm not rushed when I do it. I'll have my notebook. I'll start sketching stuff down. Uh, I have my phone. If I see something cool, I'll take pictures of it. Um, you know, and that's the kind of thing that just makes it easier for me. So Liz asked, so once you've written uh, the, the manuscript for the book, how much editing do you do after that? Whew, I do so much editing. Like as you see, um, like when I did the, let me go back. Um, okay, so this is the one, and are you seeing this page the, uh, yeah. from, the, from the book? Um, yeah. Okay, so I live by, uh, okay, so that solves it. Please find a seat, Drew. Tell us a little, few more things about yourself. I live by Yankee Stadium. I changed that with my grandmother. My favorite subject is math. And, you know, originally I didn't really have these little angels throughout, these little cherub guys, you know, that look like little Valentine cherubs. I didn't have them throughout the book. Um, I only had it on one scene where, Maury is walking down the hallway and they hold up a sign like hallelujah because Jordan found out that he wasn't the only black kid in the school. And then, you know, I might have finished the book and then I go, you know, those little angel guys are kind of funny. Let me go back in and put them in a couple of places. Uh, when I did Alexandra, the girl who has the sock puppet on her hand, um, I added her because I just kind of wanted her to be funny. But then as I did it more and more, I didn't want it to be where they were laughing at her. So then I kind of went back in and added the backstory of why she wears the sock puppet. You know, so there's a lot of those kind of things that I will take and go back in and add, and go back in and add, and go back in and add. Um, and, you know, that that's kind of why, you know? Um, I can't just do it and finish it. You know, like there are some things like in New Kid at the very end, um, you know, the mom says, oh, you know, you know, Jordan, you're in these different clothes. I said, oh, wouldn't it be funny if she says, you look like a new kid? And he goes, you know, I feel like a new kid. So that adds a whole nother meaning to him being a new kid. Now it's like he has learned all this stuff. He's grown. He is literally like a new kid. Um, and the very last page of the book um, was literally like going over it with my editor. And um, it has... Jordan with his friends Kirk and Kenny and Carlos and he Jordan says my grandpa always says that friends are like training wheels for a bike they always keep you from falling down that's a metaphor I learned about them in English because on the very first page of the book he says it's a metaphor he says oh and I learned about it in English and I thought that would be a great way to end the book only thing is like the very last day, my editor goes, you know, Jerry, that's actually not a metaphor. It's a simile. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> and it's like, so how are you going to change it? And then he starts giving ideas of metaphors I could use. I said, wait, 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 wait. And I'm literally doing this processing, tick, 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 smoke coming out of my ears. And I go, you know what? Here's what happens. The same way that you corrected me, they're going to correct Jordan. So then his friend Kirk goes, actually, Jordan, that's a simile. And then his friend goes, 
yeah, private school. Come on, everybody knows that. And that's how it ends. It's just them going off. And Jordan's like, oh, you know, I'm at this big private school and I have all this stuff. And his friends from around his block still got to correct him. And I just thought that that was a much better ending. But it happened. Um, it happened by accident, almost, you know. So I'm going to say, I, I said that that was Liz who asked the, the editing question. It was actually Evie who asked that. So Evie, that was a great question because those two insights are really interesting because the angels are so important. I think they add such a, a beautiful piece to the book. And, uh, and the, the joke at the end is just so, so perfect. Yeah, you know what else? Like, because it's a joke about, I mean, because it's a book about an African American boy. And first of all, unfortunately, there are not that many books that are humorous that feature African American characters. A lot of them are very serious. Like, they're important books, but they are very serious books. So, I'm like, how can I do a book about race in class that isn't going to scare people off? So I started by making Jordan and Drew like two of the nicest kids you can meet. They're friends with Liam. You know, I have the angels throughout. I have the chapter headings throughout, you know, that have like uh, little Easter egg things, you know, like Mad Men and, you know, um, the Winter Soldier, like little things like that. Um, so the angels and the whole sock puppet thing, that are all little things like that that just kind of made it more funny so that it wasn't like, wow, this is a really heavy, scary book about race and people getting together and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, that was actually one of my questions was, did you, so did you go in with the serious first? Because you, you talk about that you deal with such serious uh, issues and emotions in New Kid. Um, but the way that you do it, especially, I mean, with, uh, with stereotyping and feelings of loneliness and like you said, the backstory of the puppets. So did you have those themes first and then you came up with kind of ways to make them um, a little bit more accessible to readers? No, the, the puppets and the angels came maybe on the third rewrite, but there were a lot of jokes in it. Mm. You know, like there's the scene and spoiler alert. I, I'm hoping that most of you are on because you read it. But you remember the scene with the grandfather? Mm -hmm. OK, so in so many books um, and even, you know, not even specifically African-American characters, but even in Disney cartoons, something horrible always happens to the, the parents. You know, I would hate to be a dead in a Disney cartoon. <laughs> I knew at any moment I would be mauled by a leopard or stomped by a elephant or a hurricane will hit me or just something. Um, so I knew that especially in a book with African-American characters that they would expect one of the characters to, you know, have passed away. Um, so that was why I put that whole scene with the grandfather in where it's almost like, oh, grandpa, I miss you so much. You're in heaven and blah, blah, blah. And I just knew that everyone uh, would just be reeled in on that. And be like, oh, poor Jordan. You know, and his grandpa is going to come back as a ghost throughout the book. And that's so sweet. Um, and then and if I won't give it away if anyone hasn't read it, but if you did, you know that you got fooled completely on that. You definitely fooled me completely on that deal. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sorry, I don't know if it's Regan or Reagan, but uh, Regan or Reagan's question is uh, kind of on the same note here. Why did you make Mrs. Rawl call Drew and Jordan by the wrong name? Um, you know, so I I didn't experience that as a kid but my kids went to school in New Canaan here in Connecticut. And I saw a lot of that happening, both with kids and also teachers of color that would get called the wrong name. And that's kind of what inspired the whole thing with Mr. Garner also. Um, because, you know, one of the, the things that I really wanted to do with the book is just to give people, um, you know, to encourage them 
to just take a little bit more time to learn about your friend. For example, you know, again, my friend Brian Ripley Crandall, I know his name is spelled B R Y A N, not B R I A N. And you might not think it's a big deal, but I'm sure it's a big deal to Brian with all the time people put his name wrong and, you know, hey, look, I made your name tag. It's like, you know, so that's the kind of thing that, you know, if your friend is Chinese, that's not the same as being Korean. If they are, Mexican, that's not the same from being Nicaraguan. So I just really wanted people to, <laughs> to um, take the time and get that little extra thing like, okay, we're going to be friends. I'm going to actually learn about you, how to say your name correctly and all that. And uh, I just want to show you this. This came to me recently. You ready? Ba, ba. So that is the actual Newberry Medal. Wow. Uh, yep. And I will actually take it out just for you. It's pretty heavy. It's solid. So that is the front there, John W. Newberry. And then the back is like that. And, you know, I was thinking of um, taking it and having it surgically implanted like Tony Stark, you know, Iron Man, you know how he has the thing right here. And I think that would get me into any library for free, even after hours, if I just open up a little bit and show that. What do you think? I think that's a great, I mean, you showed it and it just pushed me back in my chair. I don't know about you guys. Oh, maybe like this, like the vision from Avenger. Like that. You like that? Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. talk about the Newberry. What is it like to get the call that you've won the Newberry Medal? Um, you know, first of all, it was really early in the morning. And so I was hoping that it wasn't like, hi, we have a way for you to lower your credit card bill. <laughs> <laughs> like that would have just been awful. Um, so I had, and what I'm going to do is while... I am answering that question. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to do a little sketching in, in Photoshop. How's that? Can, that can you see this one now? Okay. Let me switch. It. There we go. You got me? Yep. All right. So, first, I'm getting my paintbrush tool. And let's just see. Okay. That's a little thick. So, I'm going to make it a little smaller. So, you know, because I wasn't a reader, um, I never thought that I would be an author, you know, and because I never wanted to be an author, I was not really familiar with the Newberry because, you know, like I didn't read the books as a kid. Um, now as a dad, I did realize that the books that had these two cool stickers on it, when I read them to my sons, they were usually really good books. So like Bud Not Buddy or um, Holes or something like that, really cool books. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really know what they were. I just knew that they were cool books. Um, so when I started hearing buzz uh, from the Newberry and a lot of schools started doing like um, their mock Newberries and it was like, huh, this is really weird. Like these people are really giving me a chance that new kid might win. But I'm like, you know what? As both an African-American book, because only I think four African-Americans had ever won before, no graphic novels had ever won. So even, you know, the legendary Raina Telgemeier and, you know, Hey Kiddo and El Defo and Roller Girl, just really amazing graphic novels, Roller Girl, like they had never won. So I was like, wow, could I really be the first? Um, so the more that I saw the mock Newberries, I was like, well, I know that kids like me, but would, um, you know, would the people who are reviewing the books and award committees, 
you know, do they think the same thing? So that was really something that um, was kind of interesting. And I wasn't really sure if, um, if I had that chance, you know, but I knew that if it was going to happen, and let me just say real quickly, as I'm doing this, I like to do big shapes. So even something like this looks like scribble, three lines, but it is just, it's, I'm going to turn that into Jordan's notebook. Watch mm -hmm. how you, I do that. One, boom, boom, yeah. boom, right? And now watch this. This is a triangle and then a rectangle. And I'm going to put a line there. And I'm going to put his pen right there. Okay. So I had heard that um, the calls came really early, like three, four, five, six o'clock in the morning. So I normally turn my phone off at night. And I was like, you know what? I am going to leave it on just in case. So I woke up anxious at like six o'clock in the morning and I stayed awake, stayed awake, you know, wondering if the phone would ring and it didn't. So at about 6.30, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go back to sleep. And about 12 minutes later, the phone rang and I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't Mr. Crandall playing a cool joke on me. And I was like, hello. I was like, is this Jerry Craft? Like, yes. Hi, this is so and so from the John W. Newberry Committee. Congratulations. And everyone was cheering and crying and clapping. And it was really pretty unbelievable. Wow. Um, and then, literally, about 20 minutes later, the phone rang again. And I was really like, had no idea what was going on this time. And they would let me know that I'd won the Credit Scott King Award. Amazing. Uh, yep. And then of course they were like, oh, by the way, this is a secret. You can't tell anyone for three hours, which was the hardest secret uh, to ever keep. You know, I couldn't tell anyone. So that that was pretty that was pretty awful. Well, I remember I emailed you the day you won. And uh, you told me in an email when the phone rang the second time, you thought they were calling to take the Newberry back. Right. Yeah. It's like, hey, sorry, we thought that uh, we would call up Jerry Pinkney by accident, <laughs> or, you know, something like that, because, you know, it was just still so unbelievable. Because um, I remember when you called, the first thing I said was, you was like, hey, this is Alex. I was like, hey, Alex, please stop calling me. But then <laughs> after, you know, after I was like, okay, you know what, that's all right. Then, you know, when we talked about it, I mean, it was still really just sinking in and, you know, so much has happened uh, since then that, you know, I go back and forth with, you know, how much it, uh, you know, people are like, oh, are your life changed. I'm like, no, I was basically in my studio drawing for 16 hours a day and you know, on lockdown with my mask and gloves on and stuff like that. So some things have changed immensely, like the amount of um, email I get and Zoom requests and things like that, you know. And then, but, you know, I still take my dogs for a walk and go to Stu Leonard's and, you know, get the, something at Overton's or go to the beach or something like that. The library's here. Um, so I'm still pretty grounded and it is still very interesting when, you know, like I'll now retweet someone's tweet and then they'll be like, oh my God, oh my God, Jerry Crafts retweeted my tweet. <laughs> and like that takes me a while. I'm still like, oh yeah, okay. I guess that's a big deal because I remember when Jeff Kenny retweeted one of my tweets, mm -hmm. I like you know, fell off the couch, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get it. <laughs> so I, I have a good question from Tanya. Uh, she asks, when did you start writing? And I actually expand on that because we, we uh, when did you start telling stories? <sighs> well, like if my parents came home and the lamp was broken, it probably started around then. <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> No, my brother Daryl did that. <laughs> um, but um, so here I am just using the paint bucket tool. 
in Photoshop where I can just kind of go in and pick the color I want, you know? Uh, so this kind of stuff, I can just go ahead and, and add and fix stuff. But, you know, I think I always like to make up stories and thus, you know, my own comic books when I was, you know, a kid. Um, I just never knew if I could do it professionally. I wanted to be like, you know, the next great artist of Spider-Man or something like that. But I could never draw, uh, like, I love drawing the superhero part, but I could never draw the Peter Parker part, like the realistic sections you know like when he was just peter parker going to get lunch or something like that i hated drawing that i just always wanted to draw the superhero parts so that's what i found pretty interesting and then i was like yeah so much for that so then i kind of took advantage of my own limitations so i knew that if my limit was not being able to draw ultra real uh realistic people that I would have to develop just a more cartoony style to it. And obviously that cartoony style has kind of paid off over the years with doing Mama's Boys and Zero Degree Zombie Zone and stuff like that. So I no longer try to change um, my style in order to fit in. I, I'm like, look, this is what I'm strongest at. And you know, if you want, a Jerry Craft book. This is kind of style that it would be in, as opposed to originally when I was always trying to um, kind of mimic someone else's style. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so Iris asks, "Did you ever give up on writing?" Well, you know, one of the blessings was I always had a full time job up until maybe fifteen years ago, but. I used to be the editorial director of the Sports Illustrated for Kids website. So I got to interview people like Derek Jeter and, you know, like really cool people. So I liked that job. So I never said I'm going to quit drawing or writing, but there were times where I was like, yeah, you know, I'll take a little break or, you know, but I would always sketch out like even now as an adult, if I go into one of those restaurants, you know, and they've got the tablecloth like, oh, you know, would you like crayons to draw? You know, my kids would be like, no, thanks. Like, yes, please. Mm. <laughs> so I would still draw. I love drawing so much that I would still draw even if I wasn't getting paid for it. But it is very nice to be able to make a living um, out of doing this. Mm. Um, so Mur Murray asks, do you ever show your new work to your sons or family and friends before it is done to get their feedback? Oh, all the time. So my sons are now 20 and 22 and they are really good because they are not, this whole fame thing hasn't phased them at all. So I will show them something like, dad, that's not funny. <laughs> and like, oh, okay. <laughs> or more importantly, they'll be like, no, dad, that, that's not how Instagram works. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Well, you know, when you said, oh, let me sign on my computer to go on the Instagram, like, listen, dad, most kids just do it from their phone or, you know, like those kind of things, which has been invaluable because, and I end up putting a lot of that stuff in. Like if I say, oh, you know, Liam, uh, when do you want to have a play date? They might be like, dad, nobody has play dates anymore <laughs> and i go oh okay so then when i rewrite the that chapter in the book you know i'll have liam's mom going hey oh liam you know when are you gonna have a play date it's not a play date mom it's just hanging out so a lot of those corrections that are in there are corrections that my sons have actually um you know kind of uh help me you know oh that's cool that, I, I mean, yeah i got teased for you know having the dad jokes i'd say something that i thought was hysterical and like uh okay that's a dad joke it's corny you know like you know that dad joke bought that ps4 <laughs> and then all of a sudden they're like you know what you are absolutely right so hooray for dad jokes well those types of things i mean new kid for a lot of reasons is both of the moment and timeless and i think that uh, the way everybody talks and the the those little moments are are, are what make the book really um, 
it, it rings so true. Um, from Jennifer, uh, what kind of books do you read now? You know, because I'm working all the time, I have to say probably 90% of my book intake uh, are audio books, um, unless they are graphic novels. Like graphic novels, I will still um, physically get the book. I mean, I physically get the book anyway, but I will usually just buy them twice because, you know, as I know, and excuse the, the name dropping, but as I go places and know Kwame Alexander or Jason Reynolds, I'll get the book to have them sign it. But if I know I don't have the time to read the book, then I will download the audio version. And uh, while I'm working, like as you see, I can multitask. So I can actually draw while I am, um, I can talk or listen or whatever while I'm actually drawing. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my best friends is Eric Velasquez, who is, you know, he did the uh, great book called Octopus Stew and Schomburg, the man who built the library. And he and I will talk all the time. And, you know, he's painting and I am drawing. And next thing you know, it's like three o'clock in the morning. And it's like, oh, all right, well, gotta go. Yep, all right, talk to you in a few hours. <laughs> And you know that that's kind of it, you know. So there's just a lot to it. But again, if you can do something that you absolutely love for a living, it really doesn't seem like work. So I am very fortunate to be able to do this and um, yeah, and make a living of it. Couldn't be happier. So we've got just a few more minutes left. So I'm going to try to get to a couple more. And also just to note, those are some really epic name drops. So nice. <laughs> yeah, you know, I figure. You know. <laughs> That's, I think I'd throw in one or two, you know. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to apologize if I don't pronounce the name correctly. Sumathi uh, asks, what has been your biggest setback while creating New Kid? You know, the biggest setback was originally that I don't think people thought that a book th that starred uh, an African-American boy could be universally accepted, meaning that people in, you know, a little girl from Iowa with red hair would be able to identify with Jordan Banks or, you know, a boy from Japan would find anything in common with Drew. And one of the things that has been absolutely amazing is getting uh, Skype calls from, you know, doing Skype or Zoom from a class in Japan. And they're like, you know, Mr. Kraft, uh, I am Jordan Banks, or I am Drew, or I am this one or I am that one. And it's just really interesting because, you know, I mean, I grew up, I didn't really have black cartoons and black books. There was no black Harry Potter or, you know, that kind of thing. So I grew up with watching the Partridge family and the Brady Bunch and all that stuff. And, you know, it's like, okay, but people don't generally do that the other way around. They think that books with black characters have to be for black kids. And I think that if it is fun, like there's really no such thing as girl books or boy books. I think there's, you know, fun books, you know, good books and bad books, you know. Uh, well, interesting books, your book, that's what I mean. So just to, to wrap it up um, with, with one last question, I was wondering if uh, you showed us the, the cover, but could you give us maybe a little more of a tease about the next book, Class Act? Uh, maybe. <laughs> so I will show you, um, this is an actual, because you asked, this is how I draw it. So this is like going through the sketch stage and everything is on different layers. So I will go through and I will have, um, I'll have my background that I'll put in. And then slowly but surely, I'll start to build the page. This is the hallway. 
And, you know, I like to do little things like you don't even see the character here, but it's yeah. just, you know, just the foot, you know, and maybe what I'll do is I'll go in and draw just a silhouette of somebody in the hallway, you know, and I like to do, you know, big kids and smaller kids and that kind of thing, just to have it more realistic. I might even have somebody coming, you know, through the door like this, you know, through the doorway. Mm -hmm. And I will try different things like this. So I like going to schools because if I don't go, I don't remember to do stuff like, you know, radiators or water fountains or stuff like that, right? Um, so in this book, it is still Jordan, Drew, and Liam, but it will be a little bit more from Drew's perspective. And, you know, Drew is definitely a deep thinker. Like Jordan wants everyone to be friends and, you know, everything. He's kind of an optimist where let's all be happy. But Drew is like, well, you know, when we get out of here, out of this school, will someone like Liam and I ever really be friends in real life? You know, and if we're not, then, um, you know, am I wasting time trying to be his friend now? See, I can move these two, which is really cool. You know, like, are we wasting times trying to pretend to be friends? Or, you know, like, wh where are we going with this? You know, and Jordan comes up with a, a plan uh to show you know just so they can really learn each other you know and um i think uh my sons have said that it's even funnier and uh than new kid so i take that very seriously and um yeah i'm looking for i cannot wait uh i'm glad that i did not have to wait a year for it to come out like I did with New Kid, that it will be out in October, a few months from now. And like I said, it's already available uh, for pre-order online, which is sick, you know. I may have pre-ordered mine while you were talking. And I do know from the children's librarians that we already have copies uh, pre-ordered for the library as well. Um, and, and Jerry, just with that, I wanna thank you uh, for a bunch of things, but mostly for proving once again that Jerry Craft is the best. Um, thank you so much for doing this. It's such an honor to, to have you. Um, we love New Kid and we love you. And to everybody uh, in the audience, thank you guys. Your questions were amazing. Uh, and thank you so much for coming. And please do click the link right here below us to learn some more about Jerry Craft. Um, and with that, Jerry, again, thank you so much. And everybody have a wonderful evening. Yeah, I'm going to go make a grilled cheese because I see all these kids talking about it now. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.